welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and I'm excited to bring you another episode absolutely free. This episode is one of many released every month, totaling over 80 episodes so far. Each one is meticulously digitally restored and stored in the cloud for your convenience, a process that incurs costs. To help cover these expenses, you might hear some advertisements throughout the episode. While we do retain the original commercials for historical authenticity, you may also encounter modern ads, which help keep the lights on. If you prefer an ad-free experience, we offer a couple options. You can listen to the episodes on YouTube. You can also support us by becoming a patron on our Patreon page. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash donate. Again, otrwesterns.com slash donate. I do want to emphasize that we are committed to providing this content to you for free, but also we have to be transparent about the financial realities to bringing this to you. Now, let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be The Cisco Kid, original air dates, November 10th, 1953, and the title is Angry Uncles. Hope you enjoy. <laughs> Here's adventure. Here's romance. Here's the famous Robin Hood of the Old West. Cisco, the sheriff is getting closer. This way, Pancho, Pamelo. The Cisco Kid. <laughs> The Cisco Kid in our exciting story, The Angry Uncles. On the books of almost every town in the country are obscure statutes which, originally conceived to meet some local condition, later seem to have no rhyme or reason. Indirectly, one of these statutes in the old western town of Pine Flats nearly cost the famous Cisco Kid his life. As our story opens, Cisco and his constant companion, Pancho, are just entering the Pine Flats post office. But Cisco, how do you know the mail for Cisco here? Pancho, I have told you, I do not know whether there is any mail for me or not, but I'm going to find out. Uh-huh. Have you anything for the Cisco kids in your postmaster? Yeah, take a hand, Cisco. Yeah, here's a letter for from the dopey city. And you got your mail for Pancho from Porfirio, say, your postmaster? No. Nope. Hey, that cousin in the law. Oh, the statute book here with the postmaster, the first select man, and... Oh! Your pardon, senor. Why don't you look where you're going, you clumsy galoot? Perhaps you should look where you are going, senor. Hey, Cisco, not to run into you. You run into Cisco. Well, it's fun to have a good mind. All on. right, easy, Sykes. You see, it's worth fighting over. Come on. Next time, keep your eyes open. I recommend you do the same. Come, Pacho. I'd like to look at the town statute that hombre, Cisco? I've never seen him before, Pancho. Mm-hmm. But the hombre with him is Waldo Freeman, a no-good gambler who comes over here a lot from Adobe City. Mm-hmm. Ah, enough of them. Yeah. Let's stop here in the shade, amigo, and see what this letter says. Mm-hmm. Pancho still not see how they come here to Cisco. Pancho, I'll explain once more, and that is all. Explain, explain. I have all my mail come to the post office at Adobe City. See, Adobe City. Then I leave word with the postmaster at Adobe City where I want my mail forwarded. Mail forwarded. In this case, I left word for him to forward it here to Pine Flats. Oh, oh, oh see, see, now Pancho understands. In the postmaster at Adobe City, write to everybody, Cisco know, and say, uh, dear everybody, Cisco now at Pine Flats, no? No, 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 Pancho, I... Oh, never mind, he's not important. Mm-hmm. Ah, this letter's from Senor Frank Collins. Senor Collins back east, Cisco? See? Si. What do you say? What do you say? Tell Pancho. Says his daughter Sarah is coming west to Pine Flat to visit his two brothers, Senor Robert and Senor Theodore. <laughs> How does Senor Leader visit Senor Robert and Senor Theodore when they not speak to each other, Cisco? Oh, wait a minute, Chico. Let me finish this. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. 
Senor Frank writes that he did not tell the senorita that his brothers are not on speaking terms, but fear she would not take this trip. Not take this trip. And he wants us to meet the senorita when she arrives and explain the situation to her. See, si. Senor Robert got a coffee on one side of the street, and Senor Tiro got a coffee on the other side of the street. According to the date of these letters, Pancho, we are too late to meet her at the train. Ah, it's too bad. She's been here for several days already, I would say. Mm. Then what we do, sister? Huh? All we can do is find which uncle she is staying with. Let us attend to that right now, Pancho. But, Uncle Robert, I've stayed here with you for two days. Now, it's only fair for me to go over and stay with Uncle Theodore. What in blazes you want to go over there for, sir? Why, that confounded old rapscallion won't give you nothing decent to eat. He can't cook no more than a lizard can. <laughs> Honestly, you two are the limit. How long has it been since you were on good terms with each other? No, most ten years. And all because each one of you thinks he can cook better than the other. I didn't tell you that was the reason, sir. <laughs> you don't have to tell me, Uncle Robert. I'm not stupid, you know. Well, you stay right here and keep away from that. Uh oh. I George, there goes a customer headed for his place. Let me get my gun. Your gun? Oh, Uncle Robert. I've got to get him over here. That fool of theater ought to kill him. Now, wait, for goodness sake. Hey, wait, mister. Don't go into that there cafe. The coffee's no good and the beans are moldy. Come on over here. Oh, good heavens, Uncle. Uh, what's that? You connivance tell you. Shut your mouth. I shut nothing. Don't go there, mister. You'll get poisoned. Come on over here. Uh, don't you do it, mister. That buzzer don't serve nothing but coyote bait. Now, look here, Uncle Robert. Coyote bait is it. I'll show you, you lying old pack rat. Uncle Robert, no, no. Why, you couldn't hit a barn door with a banjo. Get on the cover, you old snake. I'll blast you, hide you. Uh, Customer did go in there. That settles it. There's a train out of here in half an hour, and I'm going to be on it. Now, listen to Yes, I am. I wouldn't stay here another second. Now, don't pay no attention to a little harmless shooting. Harmless shooting. I'm packing my bag right now, and nothing you can say can make me change my mind. I swear, women are peculiar. Yes, sir, they're plum peculiar. Well, that was quite an exhibition, Waldo. <laughs> How long have those two old galoots been blazing away at each other like that? <laughs> I don't know. For a long time, Sykes. Each one of them seems to figure he's bluffing the other with them blank cartridges. Blank cartridges? Yeah. Everybody knows each one of them keeps a special gun loaded with blanks. But nobody lets on to either of them about the other. Mm. Do they always blast away whenever a customer starts into one of them places? They do at slack times, like right now. Of course, they ain't got time when each cafe is filled with customers. I wonder what would happen if them guns was loaded with real bullets. Hmm? Real bullets? Well, <laughs> one of them, or, or both of them, would get killed, Sykes. Yeah. Yeah. I come to this part of the country, Waldo, because I figure it's going to boom. I've just made up my mind I'm going to own these two cafes. Uh, they won't sell. Who said anything about their selling? Whenever I hit a new town, Waldo, I always read over the local laws and statutes. Beats all what you find. Yeah, you sure looked over that book at the post office, Sykes. Yeah, and here's what I found. There's an old law that says if a cafe in this town is closed for 24 hours outside of holidays and Sundays, without a week's advance notice being given to the select men... That cafe can be legally taken over by anybody who pays off any back taxes. Yeah, but suppose them two don't owe any back taxes. I checked on that, too. They ain't paid any taxes for most three years. Friendly with the tax collector, I guess. And another thing, them old galoots do their own cooking, don't they? Yeah, neither one of them has any help. All right. So if one of them was laid up, he'd have to close his place. Yes, that's right, Sykes. Chances are neither one of them knows about that law. Waldo, go get one of your men to start into that cafe over there. I'll be behind the brush at the corner by this one. And you'll be behind the shed at the corner of the other one. When them two old galoots start blazing away at each other, you and me will cut loose with real bullets. They drop both of them. Kind of risky, ain't it, Sykes? We can time our shots so as their shooting will cover the noise. I tell you, I'm going to get those two places... One for a cafe and the other for a gambling hall. Hustle now, Waldo. This is a real chance. You 
We'll try it, Senor Roberts. Place first, Pancho. Oh, 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 oh. Then, if the senorita's not here, we will go to Senor Theodore's place. Pancho yeah, here shooting a little while ago, Chico. <laughs> ah, see. They were probably fighting over a customer. Uh-huh. You might just as well stay home that but I'm leaving right now. Goodbye. Oh, the senorita mad, Chico. See, let us find out the trouble, Pancho. Uh-huh. What is this, Senor Robert? What is this, Senor Robert? Oh, how are you, boy? Maybe you can reason with Sarah. Uh, go after her, quick. Reason with her? Uh, she got mad because that old pack rat of a brother of mine and me popped away at each other. Uh, Sarah, Sarah, wait, wait a minute. Well? Uh, this is the Cisco kid. You heard me speak of him. He wants to talk to you. But, Senor Robert, she I She's on don't... her way to the train. Uh, persuaded to come back, Cisco. Mm, she look at Cisco. She come back, no? Get up, Pancho. Always get up, Pancho. I do not know what to say to her, Senor Robert, but I will try. Go on, then. Quick, sit, quick. Very well. Mm, Pancho, go too. Pancho, help. What is this, senorita? Uh, what is this, senorita? That's Cisco, sir. Yes, I heard you the first time, Uncle Robert. And Pancho. Yes. Uh, Cisco killed the senorita, senorita. What? Madre mia, Pancho. <laughs> Pay no attention to me, compañera, senorita. Instead, let me explain. Uh, your uncle, Senor Robert, would like to have you come back. I'm not going back. Good day. Now what we do, Cisco? Go on, follow us, Cisco. Keep talking. You place me in an awkward position, senor. However, I will try to help. Come, Pancho. Uh, one moment, senorita, please. No. Two moments, senorita, please. Pancho. Uh, but Pancho, help, Cisco. <laughs> Why help you are. Senorita, at least let me carry your bag to this station. I can carry it myself, thank you. Uh, sure, hold on. Shut your mouth, you old fool! I'll get my gun! I'll get my gun! Oh, there they go again. Haven't they any sense at all? Senorita, for the last time, will you... Get back, you buzzard! Take that, you coyote! Oh, those old idiots! But, senorita, that means nothing. Now, will you please listen? Cisco, Cisco! Both senor is down the ground, Santos! Madre mia, so they are. I suppose that's all part of it, too. No, it is not. And Pancho think they've been shot, no? Yeah, look that way, Pancho. But what? Come with us, senorita, and hurry. I'm afraid that now you will be needed here. Stand back, amigos. Let us through here, please. Let us through here. I will look at his wound. Senor Tito shot in the leg, he's cool. See. Here, let me see. Scoundrel. Uh, Fred guard. Somebody go get my rifle. Get my shotgun, too. I'll go, Theodore. Stop it. Now hold still. Pancho, cut away that pant leg with your knife. Yes, he's good. Oh. Has anyone gone for a doctor? No, oh, that is not a serious wound, senorita. Why, it's plenty bad, Cisco. See, it may keep you in bed for a few days, but it is not serious. Some of you carry him to his quarters while Pancho and I are looking at Senor Robert. I'm all right, except for a puncture shortage. Just let me get at that old pack rat. <laughs> Senor Robert live too, Cisco. Uh, sounds as if he would. Oh, thank goodness. But look, you man... Please bring Uncle Theodore over to Uncle Robert's quarters. What? Yes, that's what I said, and that's what I mean, Uncle Theodore. If I'm to stay here and take care of both of you, I'm not going to keep running back and forth across this street. You heard what the senorita said, senores. Carry him to Senor Robert's quarters. Oh. No, no, I, I, I won't go over there. I won't stay over there. Oh, yes, you will, too. <laughs> it's funny, Gisco. Hey. <laughs> then again, it is not so funny, Pancho. Not so funny. If Senor Robert and Senor Theodore have started shooting at each other with real bullets, that is serious. Why, Cisco say, if they shoot at each other with real bullets, Pancho thinks they do. Probably you are right, amigo. Just the same, we will not take that for granted, Pancho. As soon as the doctor finishes with Senor Robert and Senor Theodore, we will start asking questions. A lot of questions. <laughs> And Cisco's questions are going to uncover a lot more than he even suspected. In just a moment, we'll return to the Cisco Kid. Now, 
back to the Cisco Kid in our exciting story, The Angry Uncles. After feuding across the street for years with insults and blank revolver cartridges over customers going into their respective cafes, the Collins brothers, Robert and Theodore, finally wounded each other with real bullets. Or so it seemed. But Cisco is taking nothing for granted. Now, in Robert's quarters, where both old men are being cared for by their niece, Sarah, Cisco is asking questions. Say, so, Robert, I will ask you first. Did you load your guns with cartridges that had bullets? No, I didn't. But next time, by Judas, I will. Wait. Next double caution, Theodore. Next, next time, I will, too. Now, wait, I'll wait. I'll fear him so for a whole... Why, you maverick... Stop it now. Stop it this minute. <laughs> Go on, more. Pancho. Si, hey, Pancho, no. Quieto, Pancho. Now, listen to me, both of you. Senor Theodore, do I understand you also did not put bullets in your gun? Why, of course I didn't. But the next Never time... Never mind the next time. So... You both had blanks in your guns as usual. Well, then, how could they shoot each other, Cisco? The only answer, senorita, is they did not. But they... The doctor found both bullets, did he not? Yes. May I see those bullets, please? Oh, yes. They're right here, Cisco. That's it. Well, it looks to me to be about 44 or 45 caliber, but I'm not sure. I will have them checked at the gunsmith shop down the street. What caliber is your gun, senor Robert? 38, Cisco. And yours, senor Theodore? Well, mine's a 38, too. Obviously, you could not shoot a 44 or 45 caliber bullet out of a 38 caliber gun. Do you mean somebody else shot them, Cisco? That must be the explanation, senorita. But who? That is the question we must answer. Uh, nobody shoot me but this old pack rat. That, why, you yapping old chickapoo. Stop it, I said. Good heavens. I have a great mind to get up out of this bed. Is that so? Well, I'll meet you halfway. Oh. No, no, no. Lie down, both of you. But they not want to lie down. <laughs> I'll beat the living tar. Are you? Eight men enough. Sir, I'll show you. Now lie down in those beds, I said. You want to cause yourself serious injury? All right. Just one more word out of either one of you like that, and I'm leaving. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. Do you hear me, Uncle Theodore? Yes, ma'am. Now remember. Bueno, senorita. Pancho, I am going to the gunsmith. Uh-huh. You like to cook, and I know Senor Theodore would like to have his cafe kept open. Yes, I sure would, Cisco. But close this dump up. Well, by the great uh, 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 Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Do you want Pancho to keep Senor Theodore's cafe open, Cisco? See, if you will, Pancho. Mm-hmm. If I could trust these two enough to fight, I could keep Uncle Robert's cafe running. Why? Why? Cisco, hand me my gun. <laughs> Just dare to reach for that gun. Stop it, stop it, stop it. He, he stop it, no. <laughs> he ain't going to say another word, sir. He ain't worth talking to. Help turn me over, Cisco. Turn me over so I won't have to look at him. Come on, Pancho. I think the senorita has her uncles under good control. Hey, nobody here for Pancho to sell food, too. It smells good. Oh, Pancho knows. You find yourself food to Pancho. Oh, good is very fine. Mm, mm, mm. Good, good is very fine. And Pancho see donuts, too. And after Pancho eat the pie, Pancho sell Pancho some donuts, no? <laughs> Pancho like to keep the cafe open. Buenos dias, senores. Pancho sell you friolis? No. And find yourself the tortillas? We ain't here to eat. We're oh. here to ask what you're doing in here. That's right. Oh, the hombre's from the post office. The uh, hombre running to Cisco. Never mind that. Come on, answer my question. Find you here to keep the coffee open for Senor Theodore. Oh, better take it easy, Sarge. This here is the Cisco kid's partner. A Cisco kid don't mean nothing to me. Let's have a look at your kitchen, hombre. Pancho, not like the way you ask, but... Hey, Pancho showed you the kitchen. Try uh, Pancho. It's a good kitchen, no? Not bad. And now Pancho sells you some food? No, I'm doing the selling with the butt end of this gun. <laughs> that takes care of him. Now we'll drag him out back. Then we'll nail up the door and see that this place stays closed for 24 hours. Grab hold, Waldo. All right. Hey. Huh? Wait a minute, Slice. I hear somebody coming in. Coming out here, Sykes. So get ready to grab her. Get your hand over her mouth so she can't be allowed. Are you out here, Pancho? Yeah, 
Yeah, but he ain't doing a lot. Oh, Hand over her mouth, Lord. Yeah, I got her. Oh, hold her now. I'll tear up some of this oil cloth to tie her with. Give me some for a gag, slice. So yeah, here. Yeah. Just hang on to her a second more. Yeah, right. I got her. Might as well take it easy, ma'am. You ain't going to get away. Got that gag in her mouth, Waldo? Yeah, but it ain't a very good one. Well, it'll have to do for now. There. She's tied up plenty tight enough. All right, Thunder, here comes somebody else. Pancho. That's Cisco Gibbs, Sykes. Then come on. This time we'll gun him down. Pancho. Get gun ready, Waldo. I got it. He snakes that gag in the gal's mouth. Look out, Cisco. Uh, let him have it, Waldo. Gracias. Good morning, senorita. No, do not shoot again, Obrick. I'm using your partner as a shield, but only until I can throw him in your face. Oh, uh, you throw the ball very easily. Take this gun out of the way. Uh, take that one. I'll wait you. I'll go get the sheriff, Cisco. Uh, come on, Waldo. We can handle him. Come on. Let's go. There is no need to get the sheriff. Just no. get Senorita. Padre mío, there is Pancho on the floor. If you always have hurt... Pancho, grab the carbon knife, Waldo. Oh, no, I would not if I were you. Place for you is under that shelf, along with those pots and pans. Oh, that's the way, Cisco. Give it to him. Uh, I'll take care of him. I'm being. Now I can give my attention to you. Uh, if you, Cisco, I'll kill you. <laughs> Anyone who brags like that should be among those pots and pans. Oh, beautiful, Cisco. Beautiful. Now, with this oilcloth, senorita. <laughs> Ah, there you are. Now, I'll see the Pancho. Uh, all right, Pancho? Um, Pancho, that sells you food. And Pancho, eat the food himself. He's all right, Cisco. See, as long as he can think of food, senorita, there is not much wrong with him. Uh, Cisco, hombre, he's hit the Pancho. They will hit no one else for some time to come, Chico. You may depend on that. Hey, what's going on here, Cisco? Oh, not much, senor sheriff. Just a little trouble with these two hombres. Incidentally, I want to look at their guns. Yeah, this is a forty-four caliber. So is this. The gunsmith told me those bullets the doctor removed from Senor Robert and Senor Theodore were both forty-four caliber. You had better question both these hombres closely, Senor Sheriff. You hit Pancho on the head, Senor Sheriff. Look, look, a big lump. Yes, and they tied me up when I came in here to find Pancho, Sheriff. And I've been watching this Waldo hombre for some time. I, I don't know the other one. You had better find out more about him. I sure will, Cisco. Grab hold of him, boys. Take him over the jail. All right. Now I can believe all the things I've heard about you. She had more too, senorita. But, 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 but wait, senor, it's way. Now what? And Pancho runs the same as Theodore's cafe. And Pancho sells you some food. Oh, 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 well, all the more food for Pancho. And Pancho finishes that goose is very fine, no? <laughs> <laughs> How are the uncles now, senorita? Oh, they're getting along pretty well, Cisco. They've reached the point now where they'll look at each other. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is encouraging. Before long, they may even speak to each other. Who knows? But I do wish you'd talk to them about running just one cafe, Cisco. Well, if you think it will help. Oh, I do. They both have a very great admiration for you. Not that they're the only ones who do. That's it, senorita. I will remember that. I will remember Come on, we'll go in and see them. Here's Cisco to see you, darling. Howdy, Cisco. Well, howdy, howdy. How can you do with my cafe, Cisco? Well, he is selling a great deal of food, Senor Theodore, to himself. <laughs> oh, can he eat so much? I will pay for the food he eats before we leave. <laughs> He's keeping track of it. Oh, forget the bill, Cisco. He's doing me a big favor. You've done me a big favor. Yep, me too. I have done nothing, senores. But if you think I have, I am going to ask you to do me a favor in return. Well, name it, Cisco. That's all you got to do. I would like you both to consider running just one cafe instead of two. Just one? Uh, him and me in together? you do a much better business that way. See, you would. And I'm sure that if you both made up your minds, you would get along very well together. Uh, I don't know, Cisco. Uh, I don't know either. Do not give me an answer right now. Think it over for a while. I will come back later. I'll go to the outside door with you, Cisco. Glasses. Hmm? Hmm. I'm going to take a <laughs> As you wish, then, you Maybe we have been a cup of old fool, Maybe so, Robert. I'm getting sick all this paper. Sure, Mark. 
Maybe we could do better by pitching in together and running just one cafe. Then he wondered if what we could. With you washing dishes and me cooking. What? You cooking? Why, sure. You don't know nothing about cooking. I don't. Well, by thunder, you flee bitten old man for you. I can cook better than you can. Get somebody get my gun. Quick. Oh, you know. oh dear. I guess it's hopeless. <laughs> Do not worry about it, senorita. It is natural for them to quarrel. That is their happiness. <laughs> well, adios. And good luck. Chico. Hey, Pancho. We come back to... Pine flat soon, no? We are coming back to Pine Flats next month, amigo. Uh-huh. We promised we would come back for Senor Fredo's birthday. Pancho thinks that's what you promised say or say, or Chisco, but Pancho also thinks we come back for another reason, too. What reason is that, Pancho? So Cisco can see Senor Oh, well, possibly. Oh, well, possibly. <laughs> Pancho, quieto. Eh, hey, quieto, Cisco. must be sure to get Senor Theodore some very nice birthday presents, Pancho. Mm, Pancho. You really get Senor Theodore a birthday present. You did? Uh-huh. When did you get him a birthday present, amigo? Last night. Last night? See? Si. Well, what was the present, Pancho? And Pancho gets Senor Theodore a custard pie. Oh, but Pancho, that is not the kind of a birthday present to give anyone. Don't you know? Besides that, a custard pie will not keep until his birthday next month. Mm. Pancho thinks you got after Pancho get the custard pie, Cisco. So? So, Pancho eat the pie himself. Oh, Pancho. Oh, Cisco. <laughs> and so ends another exciting adventure with O. Henry's famous Robin Hood of the West, the Cisco Kid. Sure to listen again for another thrilling adventure of the Cisco Kid. Cisco Kid was played by Jack Mather, Poncho by Harry Lang. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.